What's up, you dirtbags? Luke and I are back. We are in a new studio. A huge episode coming up, just preparing for the next one. But we've got a new year. It's 2023. We are back on the show. Luke, how are we doing, man? Good, man. How are you doing? Little uh, dirt bags before dark. <laughs> I was going to say I got water. You got some NA in hand. Look at us being responsible. Hey, the high knee zeros. I mean, not too bad, but it does it does feel odd drinking at noon on a Thursday. But yeah, oh, I thought it was Wednesday today, to be honest with you. My days are all getting mixed up. But yeah, it's 124 my time. There you go. What? Uh, so yeah, especially with the holidays, dude how it landed on Monday each time. So where, yeah. you know, Christmas was on a Sunday and then most people had the next day off, at least in the corporate world. And so it was really odd, like going through that. And because I was still working in my head and so I'd like call people and they're like, Hey, we're not working today. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. We'll call you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. But most, most of the contractors we work with, obviously we're working anyway, yep. but um, it was just yeah, different. We were- I felt I felt so like out of it too. Cause we were up North as well. And I was just like, I don't even know what day it is today. And yeah. we're just starting to get back into it. The holidays definitely take a toll as far as like, what day is it? What time is it? What month is it? But yeah, yeah it feels good. to It feels good to finally be getting back into kind of action and just going into a new year. Um, just kind of prepping yourself. Have you, you know, have you set any goals for the year? Have you set any, you know, are you, are you looking at any of that right now or are you just kind of yeah, still catching up? Definitely. So, um, Olivia, my wife and I, um, started it probably three years ago, but really honed it in last year. And then this year we really want to build off of it. So I'm just going to go through it because I think it's a really cool exercise and anyone listening can, can use it and also reach out to me if you need help. But basically how we do it is, you know, in the new year, it's a great time to just reset your goals. And I, you need them to be attainable though as well. So uh, what we do is we have six categories. There's physical, relational, financial, career, spiritual, and environmental. So those six categories, you just pick one goal to accomplish. And we used to do multiple goals in each category, but then you get to the end of the year and you have 60% of them done. And that's just not how you should be doing it. So you pick one goal per category and then what we're doing, what we didn't do last year is we have a bottle of champagne with our goal on each one. So that, that was a little bit of a disconnect last year. We'd accomplish a goal and we'd be like, Oh, cool. And then you'd kind of go on with your day, but there wasn't like a reaction of like, sweet, I'm going to go cook a steak and pop this champagne. Like this is awesome. So a little bit of a celebration when you finish uh, each goal. So we have that for this year. Um, And then I also try and tie it in with a single word for the year. Um, so my word for last year was outrageous, which outrageously generous, outrageous in how I conduct myself, like in a good way, um, outrageous in my faith, just everything, do it like 10 levels above. Um, but this year it's going to be impact and kind of similar, but I want to have an impact, um, on people's days. I want to have an impact uh, in somebody's life. I want to have an impact in my community, you know, different things like that. And I want to really focus, focus in on that, which tie into those six categories and those goals. Absolutely. I like that word of like the year. I think if I were to have one, it it would probably be consistency. When you were talking about that, I was just thinking being more and more consistent on everything. Dude. And to kind of go off on a tangent a little bit or a sidetrack, but um, consistency as a business owner or as an entrepreneur is probably one of the best things you can have or learn. Um, Mm -hmm. So many times I see it and it just, it kind of bugs me to be honest, but people get, you know, so excited and, you know, it's a big new business, all this stuff. And then it just dies off after like three months after the excitement. And it's, you got to keep it consistent. You got to like lay the perfect bricks and realize that not every day is going to be just like super exciting, like you know, stuff going on, you got to go through the habits and the consistencies of like building a business to, you know, kind of get through the other side. A hundred percent. And I, it's weird because I see it a lot right now in service industry, not some, I mean, service industry can be a very broad say, but I see it a lot in like the service food industry right now to where like, 
I don't know if we talked about this before, but Qdoba in town. I love Qdoba and burritos, right? But their yeah. service sucks. Like their food has just sucked because there is no, I think it's a management thing on that end, but there's no consistency with their workers. You know, there's just yeah. a constant door revolving. So you're constantly having to train people. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's just bad. And my guys have noticed it in other industries too. I'm like, that is what we cannot do. We have to provide the best service we can and we have to be yeah. consistent with it. So we had a, we had a talk about that well, this a couple of days ago. And we just talked about how we want to kind of go about the year and what we want to do, what we want to achieve and things like that. But yeah, consistency was kind of the root of, root of the conversation. Are you uh so you're a Qdoba over Chipotle? Yeah, I'm not a Chipotle guy. I don't know. It just tastes different. Yeah. So yeah. we, we don't even have Qdoba in Arizona. Really? Yeah. Apparently it doesn't exist down here. And, and I, I'd have to fact check myself, but that's what somebody told me the other day. Um, I definitely like Chipotle a little bit more, but Qdoba has got the free queso and guac. So yeah. it's like, you got to go. Yeah. You don't have to charge for the queso or the guacamole or whatever, right? To where Chipotle is like an $18 burrito and Qdoba yeah. was like 14. Right. There you but go, Luke. You can start up. You can start up a franchise down there. Yeah, it's going to be Arby's before Qdoba, but I'm um, <laughs> trying to trying to make some money here. Um, but uh, anyway, so yeah, back to consistency. I think that would be like a solid word to use for your year because you can string it out in so many different ways. It can be consistency with um, the time you spend with Lila. It can be consistency in business and the services you provide. It can be consistency. You know, you name it it's such a strong word and it's only one word. So, you know, focus on that. And yep. I, I have found myself where if I set too many goals or too many words or whatever, it's like, I just don't get any of them done. But this last year, you know, we set our six categories, one goal a piece and things really started moving. I was like, okay, when you focus down and you have tunnel vision on these yep. six goals, like a lot of stuff can happen in one year. A lot. And just going back to consistency, as long as you're consistent yeah. and trying to achieve it. Yeah. I mean, chances are you're probably going to achieve it. Yeah, absolutely. And then you got to put people in your corner too, to keep you accountable. Um, you know, I'm lucky enough and blessed to have Olivia as my wife, um, but also like my relational goal this year is to have five mentors and five mentees. So like I'm connected consistently um, and like, that just helps me get out there as well and help them achieve their goals and keep them accountable, but also like vice versa. Um, I need them to be like coming down my throat to make sure, well, that sounded really bad and to make sure, uh, <laughs> make sure that I'm getting my stuff done and, um, you know, accomplishing these goals. At least you didn't say knocking on my back door or something. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I probably could have let that one go, but I, I had to, I had to address it. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's, that's what we get for doing a podcast when we're sober and before. Yeah. Even at your time, but yeah, I mean, um, usually we're a little, little dialed up for these, but this is a, really? this is good. This is, this is good for us. This is, this is a good little break. You know, yeah. I was eating my lunch today and I don't, this isn't really like a funny joke, but it's funny to me but my hand was shaking so bad and I don't know what it was. Like I could, my fork, I could barely hold it. And Riley's sitting across from me and she goes, are you getting the shakes from not drinking or what? And I was like, yeah, I haven't had a drink in like a week. And she's oh, like, man. Oh my God, Luke, you're an alcoholic. I'm like, no, no, no. It was just, it was just funny timing, but no, yeah. it's, prob fun. it's probably because, uh, probably had the shakes cause you didn't have a um, hundred dollars in chips at the table, you know, probably speaking of that blackjack, I've been playing since you and I left and I haven't won really? a single, fucking single game since then at the but same place or different places i bounced between two of them um i've been i've been on a tangent this last like two weeks and i'm i'm dialing down our hiring i'm getting i'm getting some really good guys yeah. and i always yeah. take them i always take them to these two spots bar down or south town and they you both know they have, have blackjack. blackjack yeah yes conveniently because after we eat and after the conversation, I'm always like, Hey, let's go play a couple of hands of blackjack. Cause it's my excuse to get out. Genius. And then it doesn't seem like I have a gambling problem, but you just admitted it. So, um, I don't have a gambling problem. I just like to do it after dinner. Right. And I just, for sure. a lot of dinners. It's, yeah. It's like a really good dessert, but, uh, and yeah. <laughs> for, 
for everyone listening, because this is way different. So in North Dakota, there are like just single blackjack tables in restaurants. Um, it, it, it can't happen. I think in most other States, uh, if not all other States, but North Dakota, there's something where they can have a blackjack table and a pig wheel, which is basically roulette in a bar and a restaurant. I think it has to do something with charities though. That's why they yeah. can do it. But you know, charities are always kind of sketchy sometimes. Yeah. I, mean, I shouldn't it, say all charities, but they can be. Yeah. It makes you feel better about yourself when you lose a couple hundred bucks and you're like, well, I donated to charity. Yeah, donated it for the kids. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's funny. Um, kind of going back to the consistency top conversation that we were having, I feel like, and this is what I really noticed too, is just the opportunity. And I know we kind of touched on this a while ago, but just the opportunity that's out there right now in our world. Right. There's so many companies hiring. There's so many companies that are looking for good people that, that want to grow with them, but there's not a lot of people that want to show them that they're worth it. I made a post on LinkedIn. It was probably two and a half weeks ago or something. Um, and I can't remember what it said, but it was like, tell me how great you are and I'll make you show my make you show me, show me how great you are. You'll never have a doubt, you know, and I think. Yeah. At if you were to apply that, and if you're trying to get a raise, if you're trying to get a promotion, if you're trying to kind of move up the ladder at your job, you can really do that because the squeaky wheel doesn't always get paid in our industry, right? The more and more that you tell somebody something, the more and more they're going to be annoyed of it, right? But yeah. if you do things without asking, there that's what they're going to notice the most. So I feel this is to all the employees that hopefully there's people that are working for good companies. Listen to this right now, but if you want to really excel in your career, put your head down and just work. I think that is the easiest way to do it. And probably the fastest way that you can do it. Cause I know if I see one of my guys and they're taking initiative, they're, they're doing their job. They're trying to go above and beyond and try to make it a better company. I'm going to do everything I can to keep that person and try to adjust where they want to be in the company to keep them. And I feel like that can relate to a lot of other companies. Yeah. One thing I was just thinking about too, is um, a lot of times if you find yourself you know, working for a company, which we all probably have or are, um, don't be afraid to ask questions that aren't in your job description. So for example, if you are an operator and you're fairly close with the owner, feel free to ask them questions about like, how do the finances work? Like what, what do you typically shoot for as a net profit on these projects? And you'd be surprised, but they would love to kind of share some of that information and kind of groom you into a more well-rounded employee. And, you know, obviously there's some things they may not share, but just showing that you're interested in that. And I think you'll see that you'll gen genuinely be interested the more you learn and it's business is just so fascinating. And if you can kind of learn that from the top, you know, of your, your C-suite or whoever is running the business and show them that you're interested and you want to learn more, but you're, you're going to continue doing the work, putting your head down, getting it done. Uh, you become a lot more valuable to that company and they want to keep you around. Yeah. And I think there's, I think there's good, it's a good thing to kind of talk about like project costs with your mm -hmm. guys, right? Because then, you know, maybe they can kind of not saying that they're living in the clouds or whatever, but they can be brought back to reality instead yeah. of them hearing, Hey, we've got a million dollar project, but guess what? Our expenses are 985,000, yeah. right? Cause they're looking at the big number. So it would be good if they did ask those questions. And even if the owners were just to kind of present that and be like, here's what our cost is. Let's try to be as efficient and, and as effective as possibly can. So we can hopefully make a little bit more than we you know, even bid for. If we're faster at the project, we're going to make more, less mistakes. We're going to make more um, and things like that. Yeah. I, back when I used to work at the orthodontic practice, I you know oversaw all of the marketing. Um, but what really helped me was I was very close with my boss and I was just like, hey, let's, let's go through the numbers. Like, how can we make you know, your goal is say 800,000 this year, how can we make 1.2? Like, what are the numbers look like? And, and we bonded off of that. We, we love talking business. We love talking numbers. And I'm like, okay, so if we hit this number, like how much can I get paid? You know? And it was kind of that conversation. Yeah. And, but it was fun too, because it, it wasn't all blue sky and like, let, let's develop a plan of how to get there. So we all win, we all make money. We all have a good time doing it. 
And uh, I know he really appreciated that. And I really appreciated his insight into business, but it just really like fueled me. And it was, it felt like it was giving me more of a purpose instead of just working, just doing like monotonous things, but also like working and kind of growing myself and things I didn't know about business. Mm -hmm. The opportunity that you had to sit down with somebody that actually will take the time to go through that yeah. huge, because that's, that's not really a thing in our industry. And I, yeah. I, I can see both sides. I can yeah. see owners not wanting to tell their numbers, but I can also see your guys wanting to know like, Hey, how can I excel? And like you had said, if we can do this much money, or if I can make you this much money, can I get paid this? And I yep. think that's a totally fair thing, right? Yeah. Obviously, if it's, it's got to be within the wheelhouse of the business and the business has to make money, that's, that's number one priority. We were just talking about before we hopped on, um, if the business is not going to make money, the business has to make a decision in order to make money, right? right? And the same rule applies. But yeah, if you have a guy that's kicking ass and doing everything he can, and he's like, I have made this much money, I want to make you this much more. But if I get you to that tier, how can it benefit me as well? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, it's just, yeah. Having those guys that will, you know, fight for you, like as a, coming from an employer of just like, no matter what, you know, they're going to be there and they want to make it work. But a lot of times, yeah, it does come down to numbers. It's like, you can hear that it's maybe 30% of our revenue goes to employees. And yep if it's at 40%, like we can't operate as a business. So sometimes there's certain thresholds that, okay. So if I go out and I sell us a project, like for example, if you're a smaller construction company and I have connections, like, is there an opportunity to get a cut of that? Maybe there is, maybe there isn't, but it's just, you know, kind of thinking a little bit differently, but always kind of looking to improve the business because if the business, the business is the engine. And if, if it's pumping out like more money, like more people can get rewarded for that. 100%. And that's how you grow. Yeah. Right? It's a huge opportunity of growth there. Just like you said, building that, I'll call it book of business of people in your corner. But if you do that and they are doing everything that they say, it better be on the owner to take care of them. And that's where a lot of people are seeing opportunity is, I'm not going to call it greed because obviously everybody's yeah. in business to make money, but I think it's a lack of effort on the owner's side to try to help his employees right to where it's got to be it's got to be a two-way street it can't be a one-way street yeah it's funny or it's not funny but if then when it comes down to it and you can't find people to work for you it's like it's kind of you wonder why yeah i i mean in the past two weeks i've met with a lot of people and all of them are just they want to leave the company they're at and they're big companies we're yeah. not half the size of these companies right. And they're like, we want to come work for you. And I'm like, why? Like yeah. the company that you're working for is massive. Um, there was one guy I was talking to. I mean, this company probably does, I'm in a ballpark 12 to 15 million a year, right? Probably one of the bigger ones in our area. And he's like, I busted my ass. I worked every Saturday. Um, and there's two sides to every story. I get that. But his yep. Christmas bonus was $200. And I mean, I'm not trying to dog on $200, but I know another company in town who pays $14,000 for every one of his company Damn. for their Christmas bonus. So I'm like, don't tell me there isn't room to give to your people. Right. And I'm not trying to sound socialistic. I'm not trying to sound like everybody gets a handout, but I do think as an owner, it is your responsibility to try to help your people out. It is to try to reward them because they do work really hard. You don't see it all the time. But yeah, it, it is an interesting conversation though, because you can kind of feel yourself being pulled the other way of like, you shouldn't expect a bonus. Correct. You, Correct. Know? You, sh you shouldn't, right? But as from the owner side, I do yeah. see it as like, this is how you keep your people. Yeah, I right? think one and thing, yeah, I'll just jump in. I think one thing um, that I've kind of been doing is, a lot of it's expectations, right? You know, so if we have our expectations here and we try and keep them there, I always want to go above those expectations. Yep. So if all of a sudden everyone's expectations are up here and they're just assuming they're going to get 10 K from me every single Valentine's day, uh, it's, they're going to be disappointed. So I, I almost consistently want to bring them not lower the bar, but in a sense, just manage their, their expectations. So that way you can always go above those expectations and really 
it becomes more of a reward, a bonus, um, and just showing that, you know, I am doing, or we are doing things that we show that we care for our people. Uh, but also you do have to make money at the end of the day to stay in business, to keep these people employed. hundred percent. I, I, yeah, great, great catch on not expecting it. Cause you should never expect anything, right? right. You can't, you got to work for it. But I do think in today's world, if you have the ability to treat yep. your people right and you do it, you'll have no issue retaining your people and staying very consistent in your process. Yeah. Did you guys do a Christmas party this year? We haven't. No, we just, we didn't get a chance to. We've been yeah. so busy. and Oh, with snow. I yeah, suppose. with snow. And Christmas parties are great. I've always been a guy that it's fun to get everyone together, but I don't know if my guys really care if we do a Christmas party. Yeah. You know, they're young. I don't think they would care if I took them to, we have a Sweet Shots here, which is like, the dollar store brand of uh, Top Golf. If I took them there and I bought their meals, and they'd probably be like, "Hey, thanks," but yeah. no, we haven't done a Christmas party yet. Maybe we should, but I haven't heard any feedback as far as wanting one. Yeah, I mean, you're in an interesting spot though because you guys are doing snow, so it's probably yeah. like the worst time to do it. Uh, you'd yeah. be better off doing something like, uh, not better off, but a different time of year. I was going like to say the, the summer, fall. but. Yeah, yeah, fall like would be fall. a good time for us because it's kind of a transition period. Yeah, definitely take them to a Vikings game or something. We'll call that the fall gift or something. Yeah, there you go. Um, so I pulled it up here, and you've been destroying your LinkedIn game recently. I've been stepping it up. I've been stepping if, it up. Remember, I made a goal that I was going to surpass your yeah. fall, so I got to try Holy something. Shit. So yeah, go take a look at Luke's uh, uh, LinkedIn. I mean, he is just crushing it right now, but. The one um, I wanted to talk about was um, two weeks ago. Yeah, you talked about going into 2023 and how you wrote down every mishap you had. Yep. Uh, Basically, you know, you're going to run lean this year. And do you think, I feel like we're almost in the same spot in business where for the first few years, you know, you're kind of just trying to build your name, your brand and your top line, which obviously you need, you need that top line to then carve it off later. But do you feel that you're at that spot now where it's like, okay, sweet. We made it to this point. Now let's keep increasing the top line, but also like, let's clean up all of this other stuff that we're doing. A hundred percent. We had towards the end of the, towards the end of the year, we had kind of a, kind of a interesting transition. We, you know, a couple of guys aren't with us anymore. Um, and then that's when I kind of really dove into, okay, where do we want to go with this company? Um, and so I really started diving into our numbers, diving into our books diving into our equipment list and what we have, what we didn't use. And when I say I'm running lean, I'm getting rid of the things that just don't really make sense. Like we have, we sold a skid. We sold one of our 259s um, because we are going to adapt to what is more prevalent in our area. So our, a lot of these houses that are being built are very, very, they're they're not small houses, but they're on really small lots. So you have maybe three feet of black dirt area to drive on. There's no skid that's going to be under the 259. You're going to be on the neighbors, right? You're going to be right. killing their grass or raking up their grass or whatever, causing damage. So we sold that and we're now going to adjust. So now we're getting smaller machines. We're looking at the ASV machines to get that with smaller to so where we can go into right. these houses because last year we couldn't even touch them. So that's an example of running lean. Like we had some trailers that we use maybe once or twice through the year. And I'm like, why do we still have these? And they're twenty five thousand yeah. dollars trailers. Right. I'm like, why do we, why are these just sitting? Why don't we get rid of them? Um, so I mean, things like that. We're we're running lean on our equipment, but we're also adding as well. We've added quite a bit to help us because our rental. We did a lot of rental last year, and our rental dollars were just ridiculous, like stupid, to where it could have paid for a machine for two yeah. years. So. Yes, we are running lean and we are figuring out kind of where we want to transition into the business sector and, you know, how we can adapt to the changing in our area. Not that it's really new, but it's kind of been there. We just haven't been able to take a step back and really dive into it. Yeah. What kind of, when you say rentals, like what kind of rentals um, were kind of those higher ticket ones? Like which, which type of equipment? We rented a lot. We rent a lot of like sheep's foot, like those walk behind sheep's foots. Um, we rented a dozer because ours didn't show up when we ordered it. So we had to get that rented. Yeah. We rented an excavator because we didn't have one. It just, just stupid things. We rented a skid steer because ours didn't show up. 
But I mean, from what I remember, the total rental for the year, our total rental was like 150,000. And a lot of that was just thrown away. Like the dozer, yeah. we didn't even use. And it, because yeah. we had such a late season and yeah. it's just like, we just threw that money away. So for me, that I, I, I'll, I'll wear that one on the chin, but that's where I have to kind of step back and be prepared in order to succeed on that end is trying yeah. to figure out what we can use and what we don't need. I feel like that's the constant juggle though, yeah. you know, because then a bigger, bigger project will come up and you're like, okay, what do we need? And, you know, can you rent, but is it more so of just making sure the deal is inked and you can, you know, go get, go rent that dozer. Yep. A hundred percent. I think it's, there was some, and some of it was we put the horse before the water and we're like, yep, we got it. No problem. And then things changed. And it was like, well, now we have this thing. We got to use it somehow, but then we get yep. pulled to a different direction or a different job. You right. know, I think, so. I think it, it makes sense. You know, if you've got that project, you know, you'll be using that dozer for X amount of hours on that project. It's, you know, it's done approved. Then you can, you know, rent it and get it out there. But yeah, yeah. I see where it gets tough where, you know, if you're, if you don't need it and you're getting pulled in these different directions, like those projects still need to get done but you don't necessarily just want to wheel something out there if you don't need it. Correct. Correct. And we did, we did quite a bit of that to where, and it wasn't even just like frivolous spending, we'll call it. We'll just say we knew the project was there, but then something came up to where it could have been delayed. And then it was just mm -hmm. sitting, right. We had probably two months of that dozer that we used it a couple of times, but it just sat because we, we didn't start that project when we were supposed to, you know, yeah. another one was, was out in Bismarck when we rented an excavator because we couldn't find the one that we wanted to buy because it wasn't available, but we paid, fuck, it was seven to eight grand per month yeah. on that excavator. And I'm like, there's, you know, there's my bid for that week of haul out, you yeah. know? So it, you know, things like that. Yeah. I mean, just sounds like, uh, since you're still in business right now, it's tuition, man. It's you tuition. Know? Yeah. Yeah. That's what we paid to learn those lessons. So hopefully yeah, we don't yeah. make those again. No, it's cool to see though, that you are making these improvements and you're taking a step back and your head, you know, realistically, your head's above water. And the only way you can take a look at these things and these strategies is if you pull yourself from out of the field and you take a look at things and you realize what's going on and what, what you did last year, what you want to do this year. And a lot of it, as you know, can be cleaned up on the bottom end. Um, one of my, you know, Mark Cuban, he's like one of my favorite ones to listen to. He always talks about, you know, some people are so focused on the top line revenue, which is always great. You need that to grow, but at some point, you know, you got to make some money. And a lot of people don't realize that, you know, if you do a couple million dollars and you have a high, a healthy net profit, a lot of times you don't need to grow to that $10 million mark to be successful or whatever you want to call it. Like you can really run lean and you don't run out of problems when you hit the 10 million mark or higher. It's no, they just get a lot bigger. Yeah. yeah. Which, I mean, that's going to come with any growing business. You're going to have growing pains regardless. Yep. Right. You'll never, you'll never not have issues, not have problems to solve. It'll always be tough, but it's to your point, kind of focusing on that bottom line to where that'll help that top line as well to hopefully yep. give a little bit more barrier of, or break down the barrier of, we'll call it paycheck to paycheck. Right. Yeah. I don't know if and, that's the right term, but yeah. yeah. And uh, it's all about to the, you know, one last time, the consistency too, because in our business, like we can't, it's consistency and transparency. Like I'm not yep. going to shave off costs by not giving our customers or our clients, what they pay are paying for. So it's like, you need to do it in a way that's different. So like building systems that our team can work more efficiently in, but still get the same amount of workout, uh, you know, different things like that. And just not, you know, making sure things don't go missed or, you know, just continuing to improve that. And then of course, like softwares and other things that you pay for that you don't need or aren't making you any money. Um, I'm all for like growth and spending money. But if it if it's kind of pointless, um, I don't know. I spend it. it. Yeah, it's, sometimes it's just got to go. Mm -hmm. There was I had a post two days ago or whatever on LinkedIn, and I talked about like our machine costs because I'm really diving into like our equipment costs, like yeah. our troop cost. 
And, you know, we do a lot of bidding on Excel, which is super easy to do because we break everything down into the process of the project. Like, okay, we have export. Here's our trucking cost for the export. Here's our excavation for the export. And I want to say there's like 15 comments on that right now. And 14 of those are like, you need tracking software. You need this software. I'm like, I don't need that software. I, I don't. I know how long it takes to do these. I know how long it's going to take us to export this material. Google Maps is a really good tool. Hey, it's going to yeah. take 22 minutes for the truck to get there and probably 25 minutes to get back. And I can estimate pretty good on how long that's going to take. I don't need to pay 80 grand for a field software. I feel you like know? a... Cole, Cole is rolling around in his grave right now because he's like, dude, you got to be a spreadsheet guy. <laughs> and like I am you, not a spreadsheet guy, but he's kind of turned me into one. Yeah, I was going to say at that last sentence, you sound like the most non-spreadsheet guy out there. But that's that's the same with me. It's just like, hey, we're in the ballpark. Like we're, yeah. we're close enough, you know? No. And I mean, we do all of our estimating on spreadsheets. You know, he's the one yeah. that I, I, I don't do the formulas. He does all the formulas, but... I mean, it's it's that simple to where you break it down into the process of your bid, right? And then you add up your, say there's five different processes. You get your excavation, your backfill, your utilities, your grading, whatever. That end number should reflect your bid. And then you should have a number for your profit on there and then a number for your cost. Yeah. And if you're confident in that, send it out. It's it's not that hard. I feel like people really overcomplicate it. Right. Well, and you you were probably more forced into it because like you said, you had at one point you had 20 some bids you had to send out. Mm. You're like, okay, well we can't perfect every single one to the penny. Like we got to get yep. these out here. Yeah. We, that was, that was kind of a weird, that was a tough one. Thankfully yeah. now we're caught up, but there's still more and more coming in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you just have to kind of prioritize the ones you want, which is funny. I don't know if I told you this story or not to get off topic, but we were, We've, we did like a, we did like a meet at a, this project. Um, we went through everything. We put a lot of time into this bid, Cole and yeah. I did. And when the bid was due, the due date, him and I had talked that morning and it had to be like hand delivered, which was in Bismarck. And he's like, yep, no problem. I'll, uh, I'll deliver it. No worries. Um, yeah. And we should be good. This one should be, should be, it should be a pretty good one. We were really confident because there was two people there that we were bidding against hmm. and one of them was a really, really big company. And the other one was a random Joe Schmo who was like, there's no way you're going to get that. And I know the other company is going to be a lot higher. So we were kind of right in the middle, but the bid was due at 2.30 in the afternoon, right? And I get a call from Cole at like 2.44. And he's like, hey man, yeah, I'm just running to my haircut really quick and then I'll drop that bid off. And I was like, did you drop the bid off? And he's like, yeah. no, I got it in my pickup. And I was like, it was due at 2.30. And he's like, oh, fuck. God. And we had never like talked about the time of yeah. when to like drop it off. There was there was like an opening webinar on where you can watch it that started at three. Yeah. And without us talking about it, we just assumed like, hey, three o'clock. Yeah, you can have it there. Nope. Right. So we, we called them Jeez. and we couldn't, we couldn't send it in. And we're like, Oh no. Cause they were like, yep. Hard deadline. Like you guys missed it. And we're like noted. So we didn't get to bid on that one, but we watched. Really? Yeah. They wouldn't let us bid on it. So which, which company got it? Um, I don't know who got it, but I remember hearing the numbers and like, here's the range, right? The low yeah. guy that we were talking about was 600 grand. Mm -hmm. The high guy was 1.5. Jeez. We were we were 1.3 is what our bid oh, came in. So I'm and assuming the 1.5 got it then? I hope so. But if they gave it to the guy that low bid, there's there's a part of the project that was a demo of like a building, right? Yeah. And we calculated all the tons and just the disposal fee for that building was like 300 grand. How, how does he yeah. make any money? I, I just don't know if he like overlook that part or what but i was like you clearly have no idea what you're doing how i mean that's not even possible i don't think i don't think he knew i think he just threw the number out because there was an i mean the material cost on that one alone was probably 400 grand as well <laughs> yeah honestly if if this person didn't get it it's 
probably a good thing. Yeah. So I did, we didn't stick around to like, there wasn't like a decision okay. at that time. They just like read the bids through like a webinar. And I was like, Oh, I'm out. Dude, that's hilarious. So cool. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go get my haircut and drop it off. It's like the hair's got to wait, man. I was like, dude, it was due at two 30, but anyway, we laughed about it. We're like, no, yeah. we, we just, you know, no, it is what it is and nothing you can do about it. Yeah. That's how it should be too. It's just like genuinely just didn't know. And you guys didn't talk about it. And even yeah. like, I mean, even if you forget too, it's like that shit happens all the time. Yeah, it does. It it's doesn't. Like, I mean, it's, you, it is what it is. Yeah. You clean it up, you get better, you go get the next one. And like, you won't even remember this one. Correct. So that was, that was pretty funny. Yeah. But. Um. So a couple things. So next podcast, so obviously, you know, this one is just us two. Next one, we're going to have a guest on. Yep. We got, we have the glacier snowman himself i think his snapchat is cat loader so if you don't know who i'm talking to or talking about by now it is the man mr jeremy lindstrom he is like he runs glacier snow management and he's kind of the guy everybody knows there so i'm excited to really kind of talk with him him and i have gotten really close over the last three years that we've subbed with him so yeah, I'm excited. Hopefully we can get him a, a camera or something. Maybe we'll yeah, just he doesn't a laptop, have but... a laptop with a camera on it. Or I maybe he doesn't have the laptop either. And I'm like, we'll figure it out, Jeremy. <laughs> Don't <Yeah>. worry. <laughs> we uh we should have done it when when I was home up in we North should've. Dakota. We could have done it in person, just sat we, down. We could have. That would have been I think they were hauling at that time. And I mean that yeah. guy's an animal. He's crazy. He's out 36 hours at a time, making sure everybody yeah. has everything and Dude, he, he I'm, time in. I'm pumped for that conversation because I think it will give a ton of insight, not into like the numbers more so, but more, didn't you say that they hired like a hundred and so people? Yeah, 110 like guys. Yeah. 110 guys, just employees that he was like, yep, you're hired because one of the snow events, he sent out like 110 texts to these guys. All of them responded on the first day, but come like day five or day six, only 13 right. of them replied. No way. Yeah. So, I mean, it was, there was a lot of hours. We just got our hour sheets back. And I think like our stuff, we had 150 hours from that storm and it was four or five days of pushing. That's insane. So yeah. just the magnitude of like, how do you even think about managing something like that? Yeah. is going to be awesome to talk. It'll about. be, it'll be really cool to hear just how he does it. Yeah. So with Glacier, I mean, something like that, is it like, all over the Midwest, like people are coming up. I know they've had, I know they have subs from like different areas. There was one that drove like two hours, you know, like mm. a sub for myself. Every time it snows, you get, you get your route and you go maintain it and whatever. But there was one guy I think who drives like two hours to does his, wow. route, to do his route. And yeah. Like, that's, that's a good commitment. Yeah. And I suppose like, um, I know people know the business and know who Jeremy is and stuff. So, cause didn't James go out there at one point? James, yeah, James came up last years ago. year at a big storm. And I remember they didn't have his over with permit. You have to have an over with permit oh, for your pushers. Yeah, pulled over. And he didn't have one on his because they just got the loader or something. And he didn't yeah. have one and he got pulled over. <laughs> That's comes to comes to North Dakota from Connecticut, gets pulled yeah, gets over. A, just gets a can't ticket. catch a break. Yeah. yeah. yeah so that was funny. That's but hopefully funny. he comes back up again this year. That was fun. When did, he he did, have, last year. did you have to pay that ticket? I can't remember what he said. No, I don't think so. I think Jeremy. Okay. That. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Lo but, loses yeah. money on the trip. Yeah. Had to pay for his plane ticket and then had to pay for a over with permit ticket. <laughs> oh, that'd be good. But no, Jeremy, great guy. Um, And just, it'll be really fun to kind of hear his story too. Cause we were, yeah. I mean, when we're out, I'm always on the phone with them or they have like this really big group chat that they always make fun of me they're like you need to record this on the podcast and i'm like there is no way this will air on the podcast because it'll get taken down from spotify just with oh, some too, too explicit oh it's hilarious like it's great but it's like more explicit than what you and i could comprehend it it's it's hilarious um but yeah just to hear like his story on where he came from and then how he really helped build glacier with the he, I don't think he ever said no. Like he had the mentality of we'll get it done, get it done regardless. Yeah. And so I think that's what really accelerated the growth is having 
Jeremy on the forefront of all of that. Yeah, that's exciting. I think it'll be a really fun podcast. And yeah, if anyone has questions as well, send them over to us, of course, yeah. uh, beforehand. But yeah, just like operations. Like I just have so many questions. I feel like that I'm gonna have to really dial them in and, you know, for the conversation, but uh, I'm excited to just talk business with him. Absolutely. He's a very smart guy. So yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm anxious to dive into it as well. Cool. Um, yeah. Any plans? I know we've got, uh, it's obviously new year here, Con Expo coming up in March, yep. um, which you're speaking at. Yep, uh, same just, with you. We speak on the same gotta, day. So we got to figure out what times we're speaking. Cause I want to make it to yours. Yeah. And vice versa too. And then, um, nothing's official yet, but we're potentially doing something on Tuesday. Uh, depending on when Luke flies in too, but yeah. um, there's like this new community room that they're setting up for con expo. And I believe it's in between the educational sessions and the show, uh, but basically a place where people can go, I believe have some drinks, like get to meet people, see what else is going on in the industry. Um, but we might do some sort of like interview slash meet and greet there, but we'll, uh, we'll let everyone know too, how that kind of comes about. That'll really, that'll be really fun. Be fun to meet and talk to all those different people. And you said drinks and you had me at drinks. So maybe, maybe I am yeah. an alcoholic, but. <laughs> you started shaking there a little bit. <laughs> yeah. My, my shakes went away there for a second. Yeah. No, by that, by March, I should have hit my goal and uh, Good. be back, be back on the beers again. Yeah. So. Enough with those NAs. I know. We, I don't know if people, we had our, we had a meeting at a bar and that's why we were talking about blackjack and we ordered food and we ordered some drinks and Luke's like, yeah, can I get a, can I get a non-alcoholic bush light? And the lady kind of looked at him like, She's sure. like, we don't have those in North Dakota. I'm like, all right. <laughs> like, we don't want your kind here. We don't want okay. your kind here. The I'm, door's on that side. I'm sorry. But yeah, yeah I had a, had a couple of NAs. I was, I was telling people that it was our Christmas party. Our it was. That Christmas was our party. Christmas party. It was a fun Christmas party. We both lost money. And, yeah, but, but we had we, a fun time. Dude, you, we did lose money. So let me paint the picture here. So we're at Blackjack and I'm basically, I'm on my last chip lose my last chip. And I'm like, okay, well, I can't pull money on the ATM. Cause I got in trouble last time. So I like, that's, that's my new thing. I'm like, I can't pull any money out anymore. So I'm sitting there, Luke tosses me $75 in chips. I'm like, all right, we're going to, we're going to win this back. We're going to win this. <laughs> and we just went on the wildest roller coaster ever. Like we brought both of our chips. Luke had a couple hundred brought them both down to like 25 a piece. And then like, there was, I think there was 75 total and one of us would lose one and then the other person would supplement yeah. it and then that person would win and then would go back in like a weird triangle. Yeah. So for like probably five, six hands, uh, we just would just keep the other person supplied. And uh, eventually all of a sudden we hit a new shoe and we had like a few hundred dollars on the table. And we, we were went back. off on a tangent on that one. And that's when we should have stopped. And we didn't. And we did not. So Less, lesson learned for Vegas, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But I will say I did pay Luke back and yeah. I still lost money, but I left with $15 from, from a hundred. So, I mean, it wasn't terrible. It probably got you your Uber to downtown and yeah. or no, you had your, you I had didn't your have Uber. to Uber. I was, right. I was drinking NAs. That's right. And, yeah. and you paid for dinner. So I did pay for black iron paid for dinner. So I'm sure. Okay. I'll, yeah. Yeah. They will, we'll figure that one out on the accounting side I'm, later. Yeah. I'm sure I'll get an invoice, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, a lot of fun things going on this year. Um, obviously we're going to keep dirt bags rolling yep. real quick here though. Um, let's confirm the dirt bags university date while I gotcha. Oh yeah. When did we were end of January? What was our yep. time? Uh, January 30th, everyone, January 30th. we're going to have our dirt bags university. It's going to be a Monday night. Um, I will do my best to open up the registration link on the Dirtbags website. Um, so you can go register there. Um, we're expecting a big turnout. The last two we had have been awesome, but we're really putting a lot more together for you guys to come, you know, network with others that are in the exact same spot you are, you know, come hang out, have a drink on a Monday night, but also like learn something, you know, bring the notes, have a good time, ask questions, things like that. But we're going to really focus on improving the webinars so that you're taking something away each time and it's well worth your while. Yeah. We'll really double down on the education. I think we have some really good topics that we want to start off with right away. That'll kind of set that tone and 
you know, I know I'm going to learn stuff from it. So I'm looking forward to them. Yeah. And then uh, one other thing too. So dirt bags obviously is a for-profit business. So Luke and I, uh, we've been talking to a few businesses. Uh, we're, we're bringing on a few sponsors for the university that is only going to help improve it even more. We're going to be able to get, you know, um, even more content speakers and just value for you guys. So, um, yeah, we'll probably do four sponsors, uh, you know, one in each kind of sector sector. And then, uh, so that should be happening hopefully in the next month. So if anyone's listening and they are interested, um, reach out to us, but, um, yeah, we're, we're excited to, uh, to have a big year. We're pumped. It'll be a good year. Sweet. All right, Luke. Well, that's all I've got, man. Cheers to the before dark dirt bags with your water and your NA. Yeah. Before dark, uh, new series coming out here and, uh, should be a good time. Love it. All right, man. All right, Thanks man. For your time. Talk to you soon.